continue on with the video. Okay, so I just got back in from checking the ignition timing, and I found that the ignition was pretty close. It was about a degree off. I just loosened the distributor up and rotated it just slightly, and then retighten it again. So now that I've checked the timing, and I know when I'm commanding 16 here and I've locked my timing, I'm seeing 16 at my engine. So if I command in the table uh, 30 degrees, I'm gonna be seeing 30 degrees. If I command TDC or zero degrees, I'll be getting that at the engine. It's super important that we go and check that. We wanna make sure that our timing mat, it's our timing table here matches and our ignition has been synced. So now we've done that process here, let's click close. We're ready to move on to optimizing here our fuel in our low cam. So if we go here to our a lambda overlay. This is gonna allow us to see the difference between our target air fuel and the actual air fuel. If you do control L, that'll clean the table up here. And we can find that if this is showing us the difference, um, it's showing us it's taking out four or 5% right now as it's sitting here, um, or it's showing that we should take out four or 5%, I should say. We're not in closed loop. It's not gonna be doing it for us. We're gonna have to manually scale everything. Now, normally in my tuning process, if I have big injectors, I'm gonna be starting off in open loop, making sure that I can map out everything in my fuel table first, then I'll turn on my closed loop and make sure that's gonna be working smoothly. I don't wanna go and assume right off the bat that the closed loop is gonna be good, because sometimes on some cars, it does act a little bit funny and we're not able to use it. Now, I don't know how this is gonna act, but I need to make sure that I'm gonna map out all my fuel delivery on my low cam in open loop first. So we'll look at our Lambda overlay. This is gonna be telling me how much I need to make my editing changes by, and we'll go ahead and do that. So right now I'm gonna throw my headphones on and I have my dyno ready to go, put it into gear, I'm gonna be driving it. And we'll go sweep it from, let's say 2,000 to about maybe 5,000, 6,000 RPM. And we're gonna be filling out the table here. I'm gonna be making my changes. As I make my changes, I'm either gonna use Control I or Control D to increase or decrease a selection here. Or I'm gonna be using Control J and then using a percentage. So if I see an area needs a large percentage change, I'll be going and making that change. And then I'll blend it back in the table using Control D and Control I. Again, looking at my two dimensional values here in my 2D table, I wanna make sure that these are all gonna be smooth. I don't wanna have my lines intersecting and I don't wanna have anything being unlinear in nature. So let's go ahead, let's give this a shot right here. Um, I'm gonna go and just save this, save some of these changes we've made. Click here into dyno calibration, I'll say yes. All right, we've made those changes. We throw the headphones on and we'll give this a shot. So what I'm going to do here is actually save my data.